People try to bypass this important stage, critical, you know, to successful trading or to a successful trading plan is the, is the data analysis and research behind the trades. That's the difference between, you know, a good trading system and no trading system at all. You're listening to IBKR Podcasts. Find more conversations at IBKRpodcasts.com. Please remember any trading discussions are for information purposes only and are not intended to portray recommendations. Please listen to further disclosures at the end of today's episode. Now, welcome to our show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to IBKR Podcasts. I'm your host, Jeff Praisman. It's my pleasure to welcome back the co-founders of Market Chameleon, Will McBride and Dimitri Pagamatic. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, Jeff. How are you? Thanks for coming by the uh, IPKR podcast studio. We just finished up the great webinar, and um, it's my pleasure to have you guys in and kind of further discuss using data to gain valuable trading insight. And for our listeners, if you've missed the webinar, there'll be links in the viewing notes of this podcast to uh, cross-reference it. So, guys, I, I kind of want to start off with, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of data out there, some useful and some probably not so much. What is the overall goal of traders with this immense amount of data available? Actually a good question because uh, I kind of get this question sometimes or uh, you know where people look at all this data available and they say okay well so what what do I do with it what am I you know supposed to do with all this data um, and when we look at the at the raw data we take that raw data and we try to analyze it by taking out the noise and getting some meaningful positive signals. And the three main goals that we use the data is, one, can we take the raw data, run it through a model and get answers to important questions? And the, and the questions could be such as, well, what is the market implying about this or that? You know, or can we use the data and look at historically and answer questions? How often does this happen or what happens after a certain event? So that's one of the objectives. The other two main objectives are one, can we take the data and create a model and price a certain asset? So pricing an asset becomes very important, especially if you're trading something and you could get a good price, then that could indicate to you something might be undervalued or overvalued and trade around that price. And then lastly, we will use that data to try to help with risk management tools. So the risk management tools are just as critical as anything else. And using that data, you could try to see how can I mitigate my risk? How do I manage my risk? And what is my risk ex exposure? And those are the three main goals, you know, from a high level where we could take in data and use it for trading. Three of us have covered a lot of topics over the last few years. Uh, you know, obviously we mostly deal with options and, you know, this is gonna be no exception, but I do wanna kind of take a step back. You know, options are obviously derivatives and equity options, clearly are derived from, from, from equity. So I want to start with what are some of the data points that are useful for trading equities? When it comes to equities, there, there are a few most important data points would be probably financials, um, then ownership. And some of the data uh, points that we look at for traders are the data points that are provided on the data feeds from the exchanges, because those feeds provide a lot more color and insights into what's going on underneath the surface, um, what's behind the volume and behind the trading. Um, so the, the market feed data, at least to us, is very important. And also data points um, that will be meaningful to option or stock prices, such as upcoming events, um, earnings or or important events it could be uh, it could be the Fed meetings and so forth that could be a catalyst for a stock move. Um, so for equity, there are there are lots of 
other important data points, but from a high level, those are the ones that we focus on the most. And, you know, I have to assume that obviously the data points used for equities or to use to evaluate equities, you know, they're, they're useful for options, obviously, because you're evaluating what the options are derived from. But are there other data points that are kind of more useful for options that don't maybe apply to the equities themselves, but more, you know, more specific to the derivatives? Yeah, definitely. When, when we look at options, usually we express options as some kind of a derived value, implied volatility. Um, and we would run uh, an options pricing model to help us out with that. Um, and some of the important data points for an option pricing model is, of course, the stock price. You would need the reference price. Um, also, the dividends are are important data point. Interest rates uh, and even the borrow rates to borrow and short the stock. Um, those are all important because what you want to do is be able to run those data points through an option pricing model and then compare it to the market prices to see, well, is the put call parity even in line? And if it's not, what can the market be signaling or does it present an opportunity? Um, and of course, all these, all these data points, you, you know, they're scattered. They're not coming all from one source. So you would still have to go out there and compile them. Um, other data points important for options, of course, are anything that could be a catalyst for a move, such as an earnings, FDA announcement, it could be a Fed meeting. Um, you would have to have all that ready and, you know, and take that into account when you're trading options. Then you do have other data points that could potentially help you with the trading if you could get access to the order limit book. Um, on the exchanges or the trade details, the time in sales, because those offer you much more insights into the trading itself, where you could where you could analyze the trades, see are these trades part of a multi-leg trade, for example, is it part of a spread or is it um, you know a single leg trade? And this helps with the price discovery process where you could see where people are trading, where there's a meeting of the minds, and that also helps you plan your own trades. And, you know, from, from the, all the data points you just went over, I mean, trying to think where an investor would, you know, find this data, it seems like it's probably a group of sources. You know, my, my question is, is this data available for free or is there like fees associated with it? You know, are there sites out there that can consolidate the data or is it sort of like all the above and just kind of up to the investor to track down and find out on their own? It's it's a mix of both. We have data sources that are are free. You could access it. You could go to the SEC website and get financial data, ownership data, insider insider data. Um, you could also go to company websites and um, look up their investor relations websites if they have upcoming events upcoming dividends their dividend history interest rates are are a big component in trading and um and option pricing or even even valuing stocks so you could access that from the fed and then there are other data points where you would have to go and purchase you could such as data feeds from the exchanges, those are not public. You'd either have to go and purchase them directly or do it through a vendor. Um, so there's a mixture of data that's that's available to the public, some that's not available, you'd have to either go and purchase it. Um, it's kind of also very scattered and the challenge is bringing it all together. And, you know, with, with all this data out there, I mean, it would seem like, you know, obviously you mentioned the SEC or the exchange. So if you're you know, getting the data from primary source, it's probably fairly safe to say that it should be accurate. But what, what are there some of the risks of using data? You know, is there a way, you know, the trader investor can, you know, if they're getting it from a second, you know, secondary source, 
is there a way they can kind of verify that the data they're seeing accurate? And sort of I'm thinking like, you know, a, a service versus like something they see on like social media, right? Like that would be considered a source, but it could, you know, unfortunately be very inaccurate, I guess. Yeah, whenever, whenever you work with large data sets, that is always going to be a problem where you have outliers, you have certain data points that could be bad data points because even when, when we compile data, a lot of these data points could be entered in manually, you know, by an individual, like, a you know, somebody, look, for example, press release, they could enter in maybe a bad a bad date or they'd have to go or or bad number or, you know that could happen um and the chances of that happening when you have large data sets is greater um so there there's always that you know struggle with cleaning the data um finding outliers finding exceptions there's sometimes problem with missing data points um so that that itself is a huge process when you take in the data and try to clean it and organize it and prepare it for data analysis. That itself takes up a lot of time. Dimitri, well, how has the data available to the general retail investor changed over the years? Are there more sources than in the past? With the internet, with advancements in technology and storage, a lot of data is now more accessible and available to the to the general public. Um, some of it is free, like you said. Some you'd still have to go out there and purchase. It's not always free. And the I think that it's not just the availability or access um, to the data. It's how does an individual, you know, uh, an individual retail investor. How do you compile all this data yourself? How do you clean it and prepare it for analysis? You know, how do you connect it together and create the tools to analyze it? That itself is not a simple process. You know, that 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 process alone is more time consuming, more costly than you know just being able to access the data just to be able to access the data. Um, but given and that's and that's something that we are trying to provide is given those challenges, is it possible to um, you know c compile the data, clean the data, make the data available for analysis and the tools to analyze it at a you know at a cost that's reasonable enough, for a retail investor, right? And and I think that given you know the the advancements in technology, the the cost of storage and servers, I think that that is becoming more available to the retail investor. Is it a fair statement to say that the you know playing surface has probably come a little bit more level between you know quote unquote professional traders and retail investors? as far as the data being available and what they have access to. Yeah, so that part I think is becoming um more accessible and a little bit like you said the 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 level playing field is becoming a little bit more fair. However, just having access to the data and the analytical tools, it won't be enough. You you still need the education, knowledge and experience to be able to use that data and you know, distinguish yourself. What that's what distinguishes a good trader from a not good trader. It's still the knowledge, experience, and know-how that is important. However, at least having access to that data, and information, analytical tools is becoming much easier. Yeah, and that, and that's a really important distinction you just made. You know, you can have access to all the data, information in the world, but if you don't know how to interpret it and use it. You know, through education and experience, that it's it's not worth that much, as, you know, to you. Exactly, right. The data alone will not do that. You you still need to know what to do with it. Uh, this has been great. You know, any last thoughts you want to leave the listeners with, as far as um, you know, 
using data and having it go hand in hand with, you know, sort of, you know, valuable insights for trading? You know, one of the common comments that I hear is that it's become very easy to open an account and to execute trades. So people try to bypass this important stage critical, you know, to successful trading or to a successful trading plan is there is the data analysis and research behind the trades. That's the difference between, you know, a good trading system and no trading system at all. And when you try to bypass that, what you're doing is then trying to trade on your intuition, right? Your impulse. I think uh, Warren Buffett uh, had a quote where it went something like, uh, you know, any idiot with a plan can be a genius without a plan. So going into trading without a plan, without the research, without, you know, trying to understand and analyze the data to be able to create the models that we were discussing for um, unique insights into the trading, modeling, um, of pricing of assets and risk management tools, you're going to you're going to go in there and, you know, most of the time, it doesn't end up pretty good. It doesn't end up well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Will and Dimitri, thank you guys for coming by. It's always a pleasure to have you in the studio. And for more from Market Chameleon, go to IBKR.com, click on Education, then IBKR Campus, and select IBKR uh, Campus Contributors. For our listeners who want to t- do a um, take a deeper dive into um, how to use data to help make informed trading decisions, I highly recommend watching the webinar we just finished. The links are in the study notes. Thank you for listening. Until next time, I'm Jeff Praisman with Interactive Brokers. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for listening to IBKR Podcasts. As always, we have more episodes at ibkrpodcasts.com. And if you're interested in learning more about Interactive Brokers, visit ibkr.com. We offer more trading education material, such as webinars at ibkrwebinars.com, financial and economic commentary at tradersinsight.news, market-related courses at tradersacademy.online, and quant-related articles at ibkrquant.com. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry, or sector trends, or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. The material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives, or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and is necessary, seek professional advice. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. For more information, read the characteristics and risks of standardized options, or ODD, which may be accessed through the link found in the show's notes or podcast description page. Multiple like strategies, including spreads, will incur multiple transaction costs.